When I told my mom that I was writing a book, her response was, oh no, but do they know that you can't read one? Hi, so I'm Sarah Rankin, EW's books editor. Uh, I'm here with Max Greenfield. So you wrote a children's book. Yes. It's called, I Don't Want to Read This Book. Tell me about the origin story of you deciding to write a book. We were steadily finishing up um, working on The Neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It was a Friday and it felt like, man, this pandemic thing feels like it's very real. And it feels like they're going to shut work down. Luckily, we only had a couple more days left. And it also feels like they're going to shut the schools down. And so on Friday, you were like, this is not good. On Saturday, everything got shut down. On Sunday, it was like, what's this going to look like? And then what Monday, do we do tomorrow? <laughs> and then Monday was the start of the week. And there I was with my 11-year-old daughter. And well, I guess she was, gosh, she was 10, maybe nine at the time. And the school had sent us home with a curriculum. <laughs> and we both know that this, we both knew that this was worst case scenario um, for, for both of us. And as a joke, we decided to use social media in the way that I think it was probably intended to be used in which we both felt really alone and overwhelmed. And we decided, let's take a picture of this and see if there are other people who feel the way that we do. So we did like a funny picture and I was like, Professor Greenfield. And then we got this tremendous response. And then we started obviously doing these videos um, and there was a big response to them. Then we had like first responders and, and teachers reaching out to us saying, these videos are keeping us going. And then <laughs> both of us were like, this was like a lot of pressure. And then, so we kept making them. But during that time, you know, because of the, res because the response was so big, you know, we had a lot of people reach out with, you know, opportunities to do stuff. And um, we took advantage of a couple uh, for, char for charity reasons. The idea of a book was floated around. And if I wanted to write one and, you know, in the parenting space, and I thought, well, I, I'm not capable of writing a, an actual uh, novel. <laughs> Albert Lee, UTA, who's one, one of my wonderful agents, was like, hey, what do you, what do you think about a children's book? And I thought about it for maybe 30 seconds and thought, well, if I wrote a children's book, it would be the discussion that I have with my child every night, which is trying to get them to read, them arguing with me about all the reasons they don't want to read. And then by the time they've convinced me or worn me out, it's time to go to bed and we've read nothing. So what if you just took that argument and put it into a book and make that the book that they want to read every night? And so I pitched it to him and, and uh, Penguin responded, which was very surprising to me. <laughs> uh, I've written things in the past. Nobody is like them. <laughs> and, uh, there's been immediate rejection. Uh, and it was Penguin embraced it really quickly and had a wonderful response to it. And we had just the most incredible time working on this book. Um, and it sort of wrote itself very early, just because it was so true to my experience, not only as a parent, but as a reluctant reader as a child. Um, and I was able to bounce ideas off of my daughter, Lily, and some of her friends who we were doing homeschool at the time with. And I'd be like, Tilly, what don't you like about reading? And she'd be like, I don't know, <laughs> much better things to do. And I was like, say that again. And so it was this really wonderful experience. And then we got it off to Penguin, uh, and Mike Lowry came on uh, to illustrate, and he's incredible and really brought the book to a totally different level and brought it to life. And it's been one of the most rewarding experiences because I I've never obviously worked on a book before, but specifically a children's book where you write it and then you collaborate with a publisher and then you're seeing these images come in from an illustrator it's so rewarding um, and it really elevates every, all the work that you had done. Um, and I would always tell uh, Jennifer Klonsky over at, at Penguin, who I was working with, she would, she would send me these emails. I was like, these emails are like presents. I just open them up every day, with new illustrations. And so that's kind of how it came to be and, and what the experience was like. And now that it's out in the world, I'm, I couldn't be happier. 
Yeah, it's so interesting that you read that you the process is writing it and then someone kind of delivers the illustrations. It kind of reminds me of like when someone writes a book and then there's an adaptation of it and then they're just kind of given another artist kind of takes their interpretation of it. And they're like, oh, my God, this is so good. Um, but so how did you how did you write it? Like, who were you picturing as the characters when you guys are writing it? Because you're writing it with no illustrations or anything. So it's I feel like it's kind of trickier almost to have like the really good imagination, right? When it's just coming from inside you. My favorite books are the ones where you, obviously, where you get to sort of perform the, <laughs> the, the reading. Um, sure. I've given some tremendous performances uh, in my daughter's room and now my son's room of books like, you know, uh, The Book With No Pictures, uh, The Day mm -hmm. the Crayons Quit, the crayon book is, is incredible because it's a letter from each crayon and the letters from the crayons are written in the first person of the, or written by the crayons. So it's like, I feel like this and I do this. So you really get to be each crayon as you're reading it. And so I always love those kind of books. And that's how I don't want to read this book is written. It's really supposed to be the person who's reading the book is the one who's voicing these opinions and how they decide to, articulate that is sort of up to them. Um, so, you know, the beginning of the book is like, I, you know, I don't want to read this book. I already know that it's the title of this book, but let me make myself very clear. I really don't. <laughs> and so it's basically a big monologue. And so I knew there wasn't going to be any characters in it. It was more about what is the experience going to look like? And how are we going to elevate some of the dialogue and, and which words are we going to emphasize? And Mike did such an incredible job of really like making it playful and fun and knowing exactly how to make it uh, a really exciting visual experience. What has it been like taking it around now the finished copy, like two kids, because like, you know exactly what their reaction is. Like you get instant gratification and instant feedback. Whereas if you're writing a book where the audience is adults, like you could have no idea what people think. They could lie to you and say they like the book when they don't or vice versa. Like how, what is it like to get to like talk to kids about it? Well, I will say that when the adults lie to me, um, I just pretend that they're not. So sure. I all praise, <laughs> I, just, I immediately assume it's- Bring it in is real. The best response so far has been from teachers. Mm. I've had all of these teachers reach out to me and say, um, one, how excited they were for the book, but also that they couldn't wait to share this book with their classes. And it works on so many different levels for students, really in like a couple different age ranges. On one hand, you know, the book goes through you know, why reading, why reading is, is tough because it's, it's just too many words and sentences are the worst and paragraphs don't even get me started. And this better not be a chapter book. And so it really works on one level to sort of break down the structure of a book. And then on another level, I think on a more emotional level, I think it, it potentially allows a child who is not able to articulate that reading might be something that they're struggling with or having mm -hmm. difficulty if you're having a difficult time with it gives them potentially a voice to say yes this is how i feel um i like that book now i know it's okay to, to say this out loud because i don't understand why the girl in the corner can read three uh the first three harry potter books and i'm still in the first chapter of the first one when you were a kid what what did your parents try to get you to read because you said you were a reluctant reader as a kid like how did that go for you everything when I, <laughs> when I told my mom that I was writing a book her response was oh no but do they know that you can't read one <laughs> okay said, so that's where we're starting <laughs> said, mom I can read a book I choose not to most of the time and that's why like, you know one of the part one of the we were talking about this a little bit last night we had a book at we had a event at uh, books of wonder and uh Someone had asked about the end of the book because, you know, look, it's a book about not wanting to read a book, but by the end of the book, you've read a book. So 
somebody brought up, did you ever want to acknowledge that and sort of congratulate the reader in a way um, or let them know that that's just happened? And it actually was in, I think maybe the original version. And then it really dawned on me that I did not want to have that in because I didn't want to feel like this book was tricking those kids or that this was just mm. like a scam because because a lot of the kids who who have trouble like myself um can read through that and are like i don't yeah. like i immediately don't like this book don't try to get over on me so the end of the book is very much leaves you in the place where it started you where it started almost actually takes you down a much deeper hole where now you're exhausted and set and are like i have got to go to bed i need some space this is this was a this was a rough this was a rough go for me. I feel like a lot of actors that I've talked to over the last like year during this who've had writing projects have all said the same thing. Like whether it's from some people have different reasons. Like some people like if they're also screenwriters, like to be able to write a book where you're not getting notes from a studio or things like that. But it sounds like everyone who gives like publishing a shot really enjoys the kind of different elements they get. Did it make you want to do more? Like, do you have more books in you? Like, do you want to continue down this road if opportunities continue to present? Or do you feel like I did that? I can put it on my my resume and now I'm good. It went really well. And, and uh, as I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but we've been talking and there's hopefully, I think there's more to say in this space uh, with mm -hmm. these books. And I feel like there can be uh, more. And the book is a perfect example and anything I've ever been a part of creatively and also in life, um, just showing up, doing the best I can, saying yes to things, um, being of service to other people and seeing what comes out of that. And that's been my experience. That's been my experience. And it's so much fun to see what comes out of that because you just never know where you're going to be or what you're going to be doing next. And sometimes you're going to be doing things that you're so excited about and that you're so passionate about and be a wonderful discovery. And then there's other times where you're part of stuff and you're like, well, now we know that this is something yes. you don't want to be doing. <laughs> what do you think Schmidt and Cece's kids would be reading right now? Um, obviously besides your book. Well, I will say, um, when I've read the book aloud, um, it feels like it takes a very Schmidt-esque tone mm -hmm. to it. You can and you can really lean into it. So I've I've had a few people uh, reach out to me and say that, uh, oh my god, I just imagine Schmidt reading this book, and I'm like, yeah, I definitely can see it. Gosh, what do I think? Well, you know, I think. Schmidt would would a hundred percent want to read every Malcolm Gladwell book to mm. the kids oh, yeah. at a ridiculously young age and find ways to convince them that these are the books that need to be read early and continue to be read over and over again. <laughs>